good morning students of class 4 today i'll be continuing with lesson 2 mayur the peacock given on page number 8 of your wordsworth english teacher book students i have already explained the lesson discussed the word meanings and question and answers with you today i'll be starting with exercise b of comprehension but before i start exercise b i will once again read the lesson to you because exercise b is about arranging the following sentences in the correct order of events as they happened in the story so students for arranging in the correct order we need to know the story so i am reading please listen to me carefully mayur the peacock those of you having books please turn to page number 8 mayur was a peacock he lived in pakshi vihar but he kept to himself most of the time he thought of his looks all day he never got tired of admiring his beautiful plumage once he had noticed a tourist combing a hair and he had loved the idea of maintaining his plumage all the time thus he had made a comb with a few sticks and carried it everywhere he went he used it so often that it had almost become toothless now he sometimes wished he had a mirror to admire himself in but then he reasoned to himself that at least he could see himself in the clear water of the pond every day he strutted down to the pond opened his tail wide and gazed at himself what a beautiful bird i am he would exclaim then he would take out his comb and start preening again the other birds were tired of asking him to join them in their games hans the handsome heron called out to him one day and said shut your tail and play water polo with us no thank you said mayur my feathers will get wet and smelly he then continued to comb his hair another time a brood of ducklings begged mayur to be their goalkeeper till the time their original goalkeeper the duck arrived at first mayur was shocked at such a suggestion but the ducklings begged him to play with them so he agreed reluctantly he didn't like the job though each time the ball hit his tail it flattened his feathers he left the goal wide open every time and rushed to the pond to see how badly his feathers had been damaged he brushed his feathers all afternoon till they shone again i look smarter than ever he thought to himself all the other birds were tired of his behavior they could never make mayur join in any of their games one morning mayur woke up with the first rays of the sun he made a dash for the pond as usual to admire himself in the crystal clear water however something unexpected happened somebody had eaten a banana and had accidentally thrown away the banana peel on the ground mayur slipped on the banana peel and fell down he slid right down the bank into the pond with a big splash all the other birds watched in silence wondering how mayur would react to their astonishment instead of being angry mayur was actually enjoying the water that banana skin slide was fantastic i never knew i could whiz so fast this water feels wonderful i must take a dip more often 
the other birds could hardly believe their ears. What about your tail, Mayur? The heron asked. But Mayur wasn't listening. He was busy splashing around in the water. As he was playing, Mayur realized his foolishness. He decided to stop thinking about his looks so much and start playing and enjoying like the other birds. All the other birds were very happy. At last, Mayur had stopped thinking about his appearance. He had realized the fun in enjoying the simple pleasures of life. He now played with the other birds and had a lot of fun. Students, let's revise the word meanings also. Our first word is admiring. Admiring means appreciating. When you praise someone, that is admiring. Plumage. Plumage means feathers of the bird. The uh, layers of feathers that covers the bird. That is plumage. Maintaining. Continuing to look after something. That means if you want to keep something at good condition, you need to maintain it. You need to continuously look after it so that the thing is maintained. Fourth word is reasoned. Reasoned gave suitable reasons about something. That means you uh, you are well thought of, isn't it? Then fifth word is strutted. To walk in a proud way with one's back straight and head up. You walk in a proud and confident manner when you want to show off. Then next is gazed. Gazed means stared or looked fixedly. When you continuously uh, look at someone or a thing uh, for some time, that is known as gazed. Now, the seventh word is exclaim. Exclaim means to shout in excitement or happiness. To shout in excitement or happiness. Then the eighth word is preening. Preening means cleaning the feathers with the beak. Cleaning means cleaning the feathers with the beak. Ninth word is handsome. Handsome means good looking. But I am repeating it again. Handsome is used only for masculine gender. That's for a boy or a man. But for a girl or a woman, you don't use handsome. For a girl or a woman, you use beautiful, pretty, but not handsome. Tenth word is water polo. Water polo is a game played in water with a ball. Eleventh word is flatten. Flat, flatten means to become flat. Now, twelfth word is accidentally. Accidentally means by chance, not intentionally. Slid. Then the thirteenth word is slid. Slid means slipped. Then the fourteenth word is astonishment. That means surprise. Astonishment means surprise. And the fifteenth word is whiz. Whiz means to move quickly through the air with a whistling or a buzzing sound. That's a z sound. Now, let's go through the meaning of phrases. Our first phrase of this chapter was keep to himself. Keep to himself, given at the bottom of page number 8, which means to spend a lot of time alone without talking to other people. The person is between with his own self. He doesn't want to mix it with other people. Then, our next uh, phrase is given at bottom of page number 9. And that is, made a dash. Means, ran quickly towards something. Ran quickly towards something. The dog made a dash towards the cat. Isn't it? Now, after doing the word meanings, we uh, once again, Discuss the answers and then we'll start with exercise B. Our question one was, how did Mayur spend all his time? 
answer. Mayur kept to himself most of the time. He thought of his looks all day. He always admired his beautiful plumage. This was what Mayur used to do every day. Now, second, what had Mayur made? What did he use it for? Answer, Mayur had made a comb with a few sticks. He used it for combing his plumage. Question number three. How did the other birds feel about Mayur? The other birds were tired of his behavior. They could never make Mayur join in any of their games. Question number four. What did Hans ask Mayur to do? Hans asked Mayur to shut his tail and play water polo with them. Question number five. Was Mayur a good goalkeeper? Why? Why not? Answer. Mayur was not a good goalkeeper because each time when the ball hit his tail, it flattened his feathers. He left the goal wide open every time and rushed to the pond to see how badly his feathers had been damaged. Question number six. What happened when Mayur slipped on the banana skin? Answer. When Mayur slipped on the banana skin, he fell down and slid into the pond with a big splash. But instead of being angry, he enjoyed it. The banana skin slide was a fantastic experience for Mayur. Now students, we will rearrange, we will do the uh, exercise B. That is, rearrange the following sentences in the correct order of the events as they happen in the story. Students hear the Incorrect order is given and we need to uh, correct it and write the correct order. Now first we will read the incorrect order. Mayur refused to play any games with the other birds. He was very proud of his beautiful plumage. One morning Mayur rushed to the river to admire himself. He kept on admiring his looks throughout the day. He played with the other birds and had a lot of fun. He slipped on a banana peel and fell into the water. Mayur, a peacock, lived in Pakshi Vihar. The other birds were surprised to see Mayur enjoying in the water instead of being angry. The other birds were tired of asking Mayur to join in their games. Mayur realized his foolishness and decided to enjoy the simple pleasures of life. Now students, we need to put the sentences in the correct order. So, our first sentence will be uh, in the correct order will be the seventh one that is Mayur a peacock lived in Pakshi Vihar. Students this will be the first sentence. So please remember that the seventh sentence will be the first sentence this one it will be sentence number one. Mayur a peacock lived in Pakshi Vihar. Please write one on the seventh sentence and this sentence will come on top. Now, second one will be the second one only. He was very proud of his beautiful plumage. Now, this will be the second one. He was very proud of his beautiful plumage. Now, which will... First one will be Mayura Peacock lived in Pakshi Vihar and then the second sentence will be he was very proud of his beautiful plumage. Now, which sentence is going to come in the third place? That will be the fourth one. He kept on admiring his looks throughout the day. This will be the third sentence. He kept on admiring his looks throughout the day. He kept on admiring his looks throughout the day. Now, the fourth sentence will be the ninth one. The other birds were tired of asking Mayur to join in their games. This will be the fourth one. The other birds were tired of asking Mayur to join in in their games. Now, the fifth one will be the first one. Mayur refused to play any games with other birds. This will be the 
fifth sentence may you refuse to play any games with the other birds now in the sixth sentence the third one will come one morning mayur rushed to the river to admire himself one morning mayur rushed to the river to admire himself now students in the seventh place the sixth sentence will come in the seventh sentence he slipped on a banana peel and fell into the water he slipped on the banana peel and fell into the water now students in the eighth sentence the eighth one will only come the other birds were surprised to see mayur enjoying in the water instead of being angry this will be the eighth one only the other birds were surprised to see mayur enjoying in the water instead of being angry now in the ninth uh, sentence the tenth one will come mayur realized his foolishness and decided to enjoy the simple pleasures of life mayur realized his foolishness and decided to enjoy the simple pleasures of life and students in the 10th sentence the fifth one will come 10th sentence will be a fifth one that is he played with the other birds and had a lot of fun he played with the other birds and had a lot of fun now students let's read the sentences in the correct now let's read the first one mayur a peacock lived in pakshi vihar second he was very proud of his beautiful plumage third he kept on admiring his looks throughout the day fourth the other birds were tired of asking mayur to join in their games fifth mayur refused to play any games with the other birds six one morning mayur rushed to the river to admire himself seven he slipped on a banana peel and fell into the water eight the other birds were surprised to see mayur enjoying in the water instead of being angry ninth mayur realized his foolishness and decided to enjoy the simple pleasures of life and the last sentence the 10th one will be he played with other birds and had a lot of fun and one more thing students if you write these sentences in a paragraph this will be the summary of your lesson mayur the peacock now if you arrange the sentences in the correct order and write it in the form of a paragraph this will also be the summary of lesson mayur the peacock so if you want to write the summary you can write the sentences in the correct order but like a paragraph now students let's move to exercise number c find words from the story that have similar meaning as the following now we need to find the synonyms and which have got the same meaning now our first word but from the text only now our first word is pretty and attractive our first word is pretty and attractive so the synonym of pretty and attractive will be beautiful synonym of pretty and attractive will be beautiful and beautiful is given on page number 8 let's see where it is so that you know that it is from the text only here in the last paragraph can you see the last line of the last paragraph beautiful beautiful means pretty and attractive so this will be your first word of exercise c now our next word is watched watched means notice again watched means notice as this is also given on page number 8 only noticed he had noticed 
This is the word. So watch means notice. Watch means notice. Now let's see third word. Third word is unwillingly. Third word is unwillingly. Unwillingly means reluctantly. And this is also given on page number 9. This word is given on page number 9. Reluctantly he agreed to be the goalkeeper, isn't it? So here it is. Reluctantly. So unwillingly means reluctantly which is given on page number 9. Now our last word is Amazement. Amazement means astonished. Amazement means astonished. And this word is given on page number 10. Let's find out where astonished is there. Uh, astonished. Yes, here it is given. Amazement, astonishment. Amazement, astonishment. Here it is. So, amazement, astonishment. Amazement, astonishment clear now students uh, you have learned so many new words in this lesson let's try to make some sentences on these words now let's start with pretty and attractive beautiful is an easy word so i'll start with handsome fine i'll start with the word handsome let's take the word handsome and try to frame a sentence on it and the sentence, one sentence I'll frame, I'll tell you, and other you have to frame on your own. Fine. First word is handsome. Now, every boy is handsome for his mother. Every boy is handsome for his mother. My sentence on handsome is, every boy is handsome for his mother. The second word is Admiring. Second word is admiring. I was admiring the soldiers as they marched towards the fort. I was admiring the soldiers as they marched towards the fort. Admiring means appreciating. When you praise someone, you held a high opinion about someone. That is admiring. The sentence on admiring is, I was admiring the soldiers as they march towards the fort. Uh, I was admiring the soldiers as they march towards the fort. My third word is reasoned. My third word is reasoned. And reason means gave suitable reasons about something. And the sentence on reasoned is, she reasoned that she must have left her bag in the train. She reasoned that she must have left her bag in the train. She reasoned that she must have left the bag in her train. Now my fourth word for make sentences, gazed. Gaze means stared, look continuously at something. And my sentence on gazed is, he stopped and gazed up at his face. He stopped and gazed up at his face. He stopped and gazed up at his face. Now, my fifth word for make sentences, exclaim. My fifth word for make sentences, exclaim. The children exclaimed with wonder when they saw the white tiger. The children Exclaim and exclaim means to shout in excitement and happiness. The children exclaimed in wonder when they saw the white tiger. The children exclaimed in wonder. But here in exclaim, we'll make it make the verb in past tense, we'll add ed to it. So the spelling would be E X C L A I M E T. The children exclaimed with wonder when they saw the white tiger. My seventh word for make sentences accidentally, by chance, means not done intentionally. Accidentally means by chance, something which is not done intentionally. And the sentence on accidentally is, my mother 
accidentally locked me out of the house by chance and she didn't lock you out of the house purposely but by chance so the sentence would be my mother accidentally locked me out of the house my mother accidentally locked me out of the house and the seventh word for make sentences astonishment astonishment means surprise the crowd watched in astonishment as he jumped from the bridge the crowd crowd means lot of people together the crowd watched in astonishment as he jumped from the bridge the crowd watched in astonishment as he jumped from the bridge students once again i'll uh, revise all the sentences now the first sentence was on handsome every boy is handsome for his mother second word was admiring i was admiring the soldiers as they marched towards the fort third word was reason she reasoned that she must have left her bag in the train fourth word was gaze he stopped and gazed up at his face he stopped and gazed up at his face fifth word was exclaim the children exclaimed with wonder when they saw the white tiger sixth word was accidentally my mother accidentally locked me out of the house seventh astonishment the crowd watched in astonishment as he jumped from now students let's start with the language structure this exercise is based on compound nouns compound nouns are the nouns that are made up of two or more words these words may or may not include space or a hyphen between them for example keyboard sun hyphen in hyphen law comma hot dog students this means that compound nouns are the words which are not made up of single words they are made up of two or more two or more words join and make uh, compound words but they are not uh, they can be joined also there can be hyphen in between also and they can be separated two words also so depending upon the compound word now in this exercise we have to circle the correct compound noun the first one is one is the uh, full moon which is two words are there but they are separated and the second one says full moon uh, where two words are joined and forming them the correct answer is the first one that is the full moon so please circle the correct compound noun just okay now it's bit first one is full moon now second word is check in where two words are joined together where the other uh, set of words have got a hyphen between them the correct word is check hyphen in this is check in the correct one now the third word is swimming pool where there's no hyphen between two words where the other set of word has got a hyphen the correct one is the first one that is swimming pool now the fourth one is haircut and hair hyphen cut the first set of word is correct that is the join one haircut now fifth is <coughs> dry cleaning one dry the first set of dry cleaning has got a hyphen between it which is the correct one it is not joined and written together so the correct is dry cleaning now the sixth uh, one is one airport is written together and other one two words are separately written but the correct answer is the first one that is airport now seven c hyphen food and seafood written together correct word is seafood now eight runner up they've written together and the next is runner hyphen up so then ninth one is dining room and dining hyphen room 
the first one is correct that is dining and room two words written separately but that's a compound noun we use it for one room fine tenth one is handbag and then hen hyphen bag the first one is correct students uh, especially where there is uh, in uh, up out certain words behind the main noun then those nouns generally have got a hyphen in between wherever prepositional words are added to noun those words have got a hyphen so i hope the exercise is clear now let's look at the plural form of compound nouns now compound nouns generally form their plurals by adding s to the main word or the last word now there are two rules where, where you have to add s to the main word and where you have to s uh, add s to the last word now we'll read the first rule in the main word for example passer by is a compound noun but singular but when you want to make uh, it plural you will be adding s to the main word that is passes not by by is not the main word the main word over here is passes so we'll be adding s to passes to make it plural so passer by is singular form and when you want to convert it into plural so we'll add, you'll add s to the main word that is passes now the second word is sun hyphen in hyphen law so here the main word is sun so we'll add s to make son in law plural so it will be sons in law not son in laws but sons in law now a third word is blackboard so here board black is an adjective you need not add s to black and you will add s to the main word that's a noun so it will be black boards s now the in the in case of last words like grown ups you will have to add s to the last word that is ups now we need to fill in the blanks with the correct plural form of the compound form of the brackets now hurry hurry has bought two tool boxes or tools box the answer would be tool boxes you have to add s to the main word that is boxes second put four dash of sugar into the glass is it spoonfuls or spoonful students grammatically both are correct but then if you follow the rules you will the first one would be correct the main word is spoonsful put four spoonsfuls of sugar into the glass then there dash are not joining the party tonight mother in law or mothers in law the main word is mother so we'll be adding s to mothers and it will be mothers in law hope this three are clear to you now the fourth one priya advised me to get off after two bus stop or bus stops no here we'll add s to the last word so it will be bus stops i love watching fifth one i love watching uh, dash on warm summer nights fireflies or fire slide it will be the first one fireflies i like watching fire flies flies is the main noun so we'll be adding s to it so priya advised me to get off after two bus stops here you have to add s to stops and in the fifth one you have to again add in the last that is flies you have to add s i e s to fly now grammatically possessive noun now what are possessive noun a possessive noun shows ownership ownership means uh, suppose there's a thing that shows the who is the owner of that thing this thing belongs to whom a possessive noun shows ownership that is its name who or what belongs to something or someone ki agar koi cheez rakhi hui hai to ye cheez kiski iska malik kaun hai that is ownership 
Most singular possessive nouns are made by adding an apostrophe, a small comma on uh, right side uh, corner top of the word. That is an apostrophe sign. Can you see uh, this sign over here? It is given between bracket to that small comma sort of a sign, but it will come on the right corner of the word, or top of side, fine. That is apostrophe. Or, and we add this apostrophe and S to show possession. But there is rule. If the, uh, that I'll explain. For example, the baby's toys means the toy belonging to the baby. For example, a toy is there and you need to uh, use it with an apostrophe. Then you'll write it as the baby's toy. But here, remember, after baby, you'll have to put this uh, mark of uh, apostrophe and then add. But this is in case of a singular noun. But where there is a plural noun and S is there at the end, you need to put the apostrophe sign at the uh, last, that is after S. My friend's cap meaning the cap of my friend. Uh, we can quote more example uh, like, The bag of my teacher, if you want to write it in short form, my teacher's bag, my teacher's bag. Then the cycle of my friend, my friend's cycle. The book of my brother, my brother's book. But remember, these are all singular noun. So uh, after, uh, uh, apostrophe will be followed by S. Fine. Now, when the plural noun ends in S, we just add an apostrophe at the end of the noun to show ownership. Now remember, wherever there are plural nouns and there is S at the end and in those cases, we will put apostrophe after S. But students, there are ex uh, exceptions also. For example, the word children is plural, but it doesn't have S at its uh, last. So we'll be putting, we'll like, uh, toy, uh, the toys of children. If you want to uh, write it in short form, it will be children's toy. The, uh, after, uh, the uh, apostrophe will be followed by S because the last word of the noun is not S. So you need to put uh, S after apostrophe. You need to keep this mind. Wherever at the end there is S, then only apostrophe will come after it. That's for plural cases. Fine. But if S is not there, at the end, then you have to put apostrophe uh, sign and S will be followed after it. For example, the bird's nest. Here, look, after S, the sign of apostrophe has come because it's plural. The tree's leaves, that means the leaves of trees. Here also, after S, the sign of apostrophe has come. The mark me aapko rakhna hai ki agar singular hai, to apostrophe ke baad S aega. Lekin agar plural hai, so, S ke baad apostrophe ka sign aega. Lekin, agar koi bhi word ke last mein S hai, to aapko dimaag mein rakhna hai ki fir uske baad khali apostrophe ka sign aega, uske baad aap S nahi lagayenge. You need to keep this in mind. Now, write the possessive nouns for the following. The X of woodcutter. Students, it will be the woodcutter's S. Put Apostrophe after woodcutter and the sign of apostrophe will be followed by S. The woodcutter's S. Now, I'll tell you where to put it. Like the woodcutter's S. So, when you write the sentence, it will come after wood and then S. Woodcutter's S. Like this. The vans of fairies. Now, students remember. The fairies, this plural, S is there. The sign of apostrophe, when you write the sentence, it will be the fairies when. Uh, the fairies when. Here, uh, up the sign of apostrophe will come after S. That is, the fairies when. You, when you write here in the blank given, you will have to write the fairies when. The sign of apostrophe will come after S. Now, the third one. The shoes of the boys. Again, boys, it's plural. So, the sign of apostrophe will come after S. The boys' shoes. Again, uh, 
where keep in mind wherever there is s only the sign of apostrophe will come after s no need to write another s after the sign of apostrophe now fourth the ring of queen it will become the queen's ring and queen is singular so after queen the sign of apostrophe will come and followed by s because it's a singular noun now the pages of the book it will be the book's pages now book is singular so after writing the word book put apostrophe sign and it will be followed by s because here book is singular so the book's pages now sixth is the balloons of babies now remember babies is plural so only sign of apostrophe will come after babies and no s will not be uh, coming after the sign of apostrophe because it's a plural noun last word is s so it will be the baby's balloons now students our next exercise is about collective nouns collective nouns are nouns that indicate a collection or a group of animals persons or things which i have already explained in uh, the grammar videos collective noun indicates a group of animals persons or things for example a collection of puppies is called a litter the group of cow is called a herd now we need to find out what a group of the following animals is uh, called by matching the columns now i will be telling and you will be writing and you need to learn this horses horses with horses we use the noun team so it will be a team of horses a team of horses then with the dogs with dogs we use pack a pack of dogs it can also be a pack of wolves also then sparrows sparrows we use host a host of sparrows a host of sparrows then oxen with oxen we use yoke a yoke of oxen a yoke of oxen and with bees we use hive a hive of bees a hive of bees then uh, with zebras we use a zeal of zebras remember the z z factor z for zeal and z for zebra so just easier for you to recall that z for zebra is there the collective noun of zebra will be zeal then next is gorillas a band of gorillas a band of gorillas then chickens a brood of chickens in the lesson also you heard a brood of ducklings so brood can be used both for ducklings as well as chickens then comes dolphin dolphin a school of dolphin and last word is troop troop will come students with baboon troop will come with baboon a troop of baboons a troop of baboons hope this is clear to you please write these collective nouns in your notebooks and learn them now we have the listening exercise will be done in the class when we get the book and the cd now we'll start with creative writing write a story with the help of clues given under each picture suggest a suitable title now students this story i believe everybody must have heard or read somewhere donkey found tiger skin put it on look like a tiger animals run away scared night others donkeys bring donkey not stop himself starts bring all animals said you are only a donkey so students our story will be and we need to give a title also so first we'll uh, frame a title now who's wearing a tiger skin the donkey is wearing a tiger skin so our title of the story will be the donkey in tiger skin the title of our story will be the donkey in tiger skin and here after tiger apostrophe which we have just learned apostrophe followed by s the donkey in tiger skin 
Now we'll frame the story. Once who found a tiger skin donkey? So once a donkey found a tiger skin. Once a donkey found a tiger skin. He put it on his body. You can see in the picture he is wearing the tiger skin. So he put it on his body. After wearing the tiger skin, the donkey looked like a tiger. After wearing the tiger skin, the donkey looked like a tiger. All the animals ran away. All the animals ran away when they saw him. All the animals ran away when they saw him. They thought it was a tiger. They ran because they thought that it was a tiger. They were scared of him. They were scared of him. Now one night what happened? One night when the donkey with the tiger skin was grazing in the field. You can see uh, over here that he is there in the field. Here in this picture, you can see the donkey in the field, isn't it? So, he was grazing in the field. He heard the other's donkey bring. And in the field, what did he hear? The other's donkey bring. The donkey could not stop himself. The donkey could not stop himself and start spraying. He couldn't stop himself when he heard the other's donkey bring. So, he also starts Brain. And when the other animals heard him bring, when the other animals, they heard him bring, initially they thought that it was a tiger. But when the donkey started bring, they recognized him. And when they heard him bring, they he knew that it was the donkey under a tiger skin. And they knew that it was a donkey under a tiger skin. So they said, you are only a donkey. So what did they say? You said you are only a donkey. Now students, uh, since we have written a title, we have also framed a story. Now we should also uh, tell the moral of the story. Now what message does it convey? So the moral of our story is, do not pretend to be what you are not. Do not pretend to be what you are not. The moral of a story is, do not pretend to be what you are not. So students, this uh, was the story. And once again, I'll read the story for you. And please write the story in your notebooks also. The title of a story is, The Donkey in Tiger Skin. The story starts like, Once a donkey found a tiger skin, he put it on his body. After wearing the tiger skin, the donkey looked like a tiger. All the animals ran away when they saw him. They thought it was a tiger. They were scared of him. One night, when the donkey with the tiger skin was grazing in the field, he heard the other's donkey praying. The donkey could not stop himself and he starts praying. When the other animals heard him praying, they knew that it was the donkey under a tiger skin. So they said, you are only a donkey. Moral of the story, do not pretend to be what you are not. And students uh, talk time will be doing it in the class when you also um, express your views about the story, the Mayur, the Peacock.